Good morning, or should I say afternoon now, depending on where you are in the country. Um, this is Jennifer Moran. I am doing a little cup of joe with J-Mo, <laughs> except I don't have joe. I have actually a really yummy, like, fat burner focus enhancer from my health and wellness movement that I'm a part of. So, that is what I'm drinking today. I'm trying to stay on task and focused uh, in regards to my workouts and all of that because I have my whole slim by summer 2019 group, right? So uh, I got to lead by example here. So uh, no coffee right now, doing something else instead. So anyway, today I'm super excited. She's already watching and I can't wait to bring her on. She is a great friend of mine um, and I would like to even say that she's become a mentor to me because she has some of the most amazing qualities that just kind of come to her naturally. Um, and I had the honor and the pleasure of meeting this woman uh, when we were down in Cabo San Lucas on a mastermind with the John and Nadia Melton. And so um, she is an incredible woman. Um, she is not part of the health and wellness movement that I'm a part of. She's in a uh, different health and wellness movement, but all part of the same industry, which is direct sales. And I just absolutely adore this woman. I've learned so much from her. And she has a powerful story to tell. And I don't even think she even knows uh, how amazing her story is. So I'm going to bring her on the screen real quick. And we're going to get rolling. I have to scroll up a little bit to find her. There she is. Um, so... Here we go. And everybody, meet Nina. Uh, and Nina, do you say it's staple? Do you say staple, Nina? Can you hear me? It's weird. My sound isn't here. Oh, I can hear you. There you oh, are. You can? Yeah. Okay. That's you weird. You sound okay. really good and you look beautiful. You know why? It's because I turned this down, I bet. Okay, oh, go, go ahead. There. Now we can. Now we can hear you and see you, and you look gorgeous, I was just saying. So, um, now, Nina, Nina, how do you say your last name? Is it Stapel, Staple? How do, S -P -A -P -E -L, how do you pronounce it? S-P-A-P-E-L, Staple. Staple, just like a stapler. Yes, except it's spelled different than a staple, I'm sorry. I, I know, I know. Well, that's because you're unique, right? You're different. <laughs> so, and we love that about you. So I was just bragging on you. I don't know if you got to hear me talk about well, you. you did. But I did, I and did. I'm like, was... hey, Jennifer, stop. <laughs> <laughs> but you're amazing. And I, I even had the distinct honor of getting to sit next to you on the plane the whole way back uh, yes, from Cabo to Houston, even though you were continuing on, right? Because you live in Minneapolis. Wisconsin. Correct? Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Not yeah. Minnesota, Wisconsin. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I've. I've never even been to Wisconsin, ever. I should come visit you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've been down to Texas. I know. Well, you've been down to Texas with me, at least to Hobby Airport, right? On yeah. Southwest Airlines. So. <laughs> yeah, I've been there several times through the years. So, no, it has been an amazing, I, I am just as grateful as you are, Jennifer. You're newer in the industry, but you are on fire. And you were a tremendous inspiration to me while I was while we met at that mastermind. So I feel just as privileged and honored to be able to. This is amazing for us to do this, being in two totally different companies, but having the I, same love for people. And yeah, yeah. One and you know, and I, I really have a lot of respect for your company because obviously I've been in the industry 14 years, and um, and I've known about your company for a very long time. Um, in fact. You know, part of my story um, about your company, and, and I'm going to have to say it, uh, too, uh, just because I don't know if I ever told you this. I might have in Cabo. But years ago, when I was a cardiovascular specialty rep in pharmaceutical sales, way before I got into network marketing, um, I co-wrote a book with a good friend of mine uh, named Cess Guerra. So hi, Cess, if you're watching. Um, <laughs> but we wrote a book called Pill Pushers, and we were co-authoring it. So we were working on it together over at his condominium at the time. And he was writing upstairs, and I was downstairs doing my writing uh, because we had a corporate storyline we had to combine. And so I'm over washing my hands at his sink, Nina, and I see all these bottles around his sink. And I'm like, Seth, are you sick? I mean, he was a district manager in pharmaceutical sales, but he was 
you know, in great shape, you know, uh, he was a, several years older than me. I want to say Sus is probably 10 years older, but doesn't look it. He looks probably as young, if not younger than me, for sure. Um, but anyway, all these bottles. And I'm like, Sus, are you sick? And he goes, no, those are my vitamins. <laughs> and I was like, really? And I pick them up and they say Shackley on them, right? And I'm like, oh my God, you're in Shackley? And, you know, because I had a, such a low opinion of network marketing at the time, which, hello, 14 years later, totally different opinion. But he said, yeah, I joined them as a paramedic uh, back when he was a paratrooper in the Army, when he was 17 or 18 years old. And he'd been on y'all's vitamins, I don't know, for years and years and years and years. And, um, you know, which was a testament to me, fast forward, as I was sitting uh, in front of Logan Stout, the CEO of ID Life, and I was talking about coming over to do a health and wellness company, and I wasn't sure I wanted to do it because I was coming from a service-based company where we did electricity and gas. But the one thing that stuck in my mind was when somebody uh, quit the business uh, at my energy company, they would stop using the product. They would just switch because there was no such thing as Walmart electricity or Gucci electricity, right? But in the case of vitamins, and that story stuck in my head. Here, Seth had started with your company when he was 17 or 18 years old. Now, granted, he wasn't working the business anymore, but he had been a customer and a loyal customer of the product for, gosh, 20 years or so at the time. And, um, and, and he was in great shape, too. So that was a testament to your products. And that is part of why I joined ID Life was really because of that testimony, knowing that Health and wellness is very important. And I know you and I line up. That's part of why we're doing this together is that we love people. We want to see people lead healthy lives. Um, but at the same time, it's a true residual product. You know, it's something people are going to come back to month in and month out um, when it's in health and wellness. And so that was a true testament um, to you guys and to your company because he was in great shape and uh, he'd been on the product for over 20 years. He might be your customer, Nina. No, he's not. You don't think? You'll have to look him up. How would you know? Your team is so big. I don't think you would well, know. I guess that's true down the line. Yeah. You might need to look him up. That would be interesting. We could do a part yeah. two on that. To find um, out who he's down the line from. That's true. Yeah. So I asked you to do this interview with me today because, um, you know, I, I think from a broader perspective, we have a lot of people that follow both you and I that are in the direct sales space, obviously, and, and network marketing. Um, we also have people that are interested in health and wellness, but this isn't going to be really about our companies today. It's really going to be more about, um, and, and what I wanted to interview you about is the fact that you've been with your company, how long now? 30 years? 39. 39? It's oh 40 years in August, which is hard for me to say. It's like, I'm not that old. I'm not that old. <laughs> I was about to say, Nina, you must have joined when you were 12 yeah. because you did not look like you could have been in a company for 39 years. That's crazy. Yeah. It, that it's is hard crazy. to imagine, you know, when you do this and you have this lifestyle, it's hard to imagine what life would be like without it. Yeah, I know. In that, a, that's a so lot true. of ways. No, so tell us some of those ways since you're on that track. Tell us some of the ways that residual income has changed your life by being part of this industry. Well, I want to go first back to the health part. I mean, yes. at my age and I'm not on a single med, that's abnormal. Say okay. that again. You're not on a single medication. No. Man, that's no. awesome. That and, is and awesome. The, yeah, Does that freak your doctor out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially when they see what I take, you know, like you yeah. said, all those bottles, but you know what it, that is my, I call it my health insurance Yeah, because I've, I've been through some challenges, but you know what I, I had, I actually even had cancer, but because of all the nutrition I was doing, it totally encased my stuff and my kidneys are better today than most people that have never had kidney cancer. Wow, that is crazy. I, I don't think I even knew that, that you ever battled cancer. You don't even look like that. No. Like you would have ever been ill in your life. Yes, but the fact that my kidneys are perfectly healthy today, and I attribute, I always say God and Shackley. I never say yeah. just, just Shackley, always, because he has to bless the means. But um, So that's been huge. But what else has it changed my life? I ended up single when I was 50. Oh, and wow. I have no education. 
I have a master's in health, you know, because of all the people. And we never quit learning, right? Mm -hmm. But in my 50s, I ended up single. And it's like, where would I be today with no education? You know, yeah. retirement years. I was married to a farmer. So the Social Security is tiddly squat. Yeah. You know, I look at... I look at the entrepreneurial benefits that my kids have. They all are in business. Uh, they want to be in business. My one, my daughter's, my one daughter is starting in with yoga and stuff, um, but she's very much into the nutrition. And you yes. can use it. when you're grown up in an entrepreneurial home, that's what the kids yeah. want. They want that freedom and flexibility that they watched mom have. They got to travel because of that, you know? Yep. There was, there was so many, I can't imagine my life without this. And you know what? There's still people that think that network marketing is no good and it's a pyramid and it's illegal and all this kind of stuff. It's like, well, I've been in business for 39 years. Our company's been in business for 60 years. If it was illegal, yeah. do you think that we'd have been caught by now? I know. And I mean, I think uh, what Warren Buffett is actually an investor in, um, it used to be three. I think it's now two network yeah. marketing companies. I know with our particular company, uh, the Crow family is an investor. We've got Troy Aikman, who is not a spokesperson, an investor. I think these people um, and, you know, uh, would not be investing in network marketing with this kind of acumen um, Ooh, if, you know, if it were a pyramid scheme. And you guys certainly would not have survived what Shackley has been around 70 years, you said? How, how um, actually, we've been incorporated since 56. We're the oldest company around. But you know what? On that line, what you just said there, yeah. our current owner is a billionaire, and he spent $20 million in five yeah. years finding his next company. And the first wow. thing he found is that if you want to make money long term, you should buy a network marketing company. That's so true. That's and so the true. the second thing he found is it should be a health and wellness company. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting because back when I was in my um, energy company, it was interesting because I used to share a story about, I believe it was Bill Gates and Warren Buffett who were doing town hall meetings around the country. And I think they did one from Columbia University that was actually televised like on CNN or somewhere. And they were asked, um, because of course this was back during the recession, um, you know, what industries do you think are recession proof going forward if you were going to invest in something in the future? And, I, you know, of course, I always used it back then because they one of the, the industries that they mentioned was energy. But the number one industry they they mentioned was health and wellness and health care um, because people care about their health. Right. And mm -hmm. I think now more than ever, you know, a lot of people come up to me and I'm sure they do this with you, Nina, perhaps. But they say, oh, you know, the health and wellness trend like it's trendy and I'm like well if it's trendy then thank god it's trendy because um I truly believe that we are helping people prevent disease you know we always have to say and I know you have to say it too in your company but we don't claim to cure treat or prevent any disease and the FDA forces us to say that but yet I can absolutely say in my own personal opinion um and in my own life that I've seen a huge difference in my health um you know people tell me I look younger now than I did 10 years ago. And I've even had some mm -hmm. health challenges. And I think I've come out of those stronger and we're able to battle through them stronger uh, than maybe some other people because I lead a healthy lifestyle. And it kind of speaks to what you just said about you having kidney cancer. And now your kidneys are right back as though nothing ever happened, you know, and, mm -hmm. and you're free of that. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. It's, it's the best. I, I, I can't imagine having a family. Yeah. Not having a business like this. You get to build your business around your family and sit your family around your work. Yes, absolutely. That absolutely. was huge to me. That was huge yes. to me through the years. You know, things change through the years, but go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep interrupting you. No, no. Well, I, now, one of the things I wanted to talk about today, though, especially in this day and age, and, and what really... I think surprised all of us at the mastermind, um, especially because now really, you know, and to your point, there are still people that unfortunately think network marketing is not legitimate or that it's a pyramid scheme, which I'm like, really? And they're telling you this as they're working a job where they have somebody above them that does less and makes more, right? 
I'm right. like, really? Okay. I, I tell everybody, if you're married, you're in a pyramid and your wife is at the top. Just saying. But <laughs> um, yeah. But anyway, the bottom line is what really surprised us all about you, Nina, is the fact that now, in my opinion, network marketing's become really big because the whole side hustle, the gig economy where people are driving for Uber and walking dogs for wags.com or, you know, pet sitting for rover.com. Now having a side job is cool. You know, back, I think in our day and age, um, you know, if you were working a job and you were doing something on the side, it was kind of like, what's wrong? You know, like that was not something you wanted to do. Now, a lot of people are entrepreneurial and that that's exploding the direct sales in the network marketing space. But what's interesting is now you don't see people sticking with one thing long term for 30 years, 39 years like yourself. And so, you know, I, I'd love for you to touch on, um, you know, some of the challenges that you may have had, because, you know, I know we as leaders, we face all the time um, negativity, rejection, um, people who quit, um, you know, different um, ebbs and flows, even within the company, if there's any changes with executive teams and things like that. I mean, my company's pretty, pretty young, but I know at my old company, there were some things that went on and, and different, um, you know, drama at the higher levels um, that could shake the company up and you'd see people leave and then try to come back. And it was just kind of crazy. So I'd love for you to speak to that. And then what I really want you to get into too, is talking about, um, you know, that your ultimate negativity really came from your own relationship. You were, you were married at the time and in a very abusive relationship. And, um, you know, I, I'd love for you to touch on that as well. And before we get into that, if you're watching this on replay, I do want to say drop replay in the comments. We want to know that you were here with us. Um, but Nina, I'm going to kick it back to you. I know you, I kind of gave you a lot to chew on. So kind of get in where you yeah. fit in there. And where do you want to start? Like, do you want to start with, with pers perseverance and how that's paid off or, you know, where do you want to go? Yeah. Um, you know, when you start in network marketing, you, because you've listened to these amazing stories of different people's lives, you think it's going to be a straight uphill ride, right? So what you said, it's, it's like this up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. But as long as you stick with it, you continue going up. Because so often what happens, and I've, I've watched this happen over and over and over and over, is people run into challenges. And I think that's where my relationship, not being a good one, helped me. Mm -hmm. but, so you don't have to have a bad relationship to learn this lesson. Learn from somebody who's been there. You're going to have challenges. I don't care what job you work. There are challenges. There's things we don't like. There's relationships that happen in a job that create friction, that create problems. So are you going to fight it? Are you going to, you know, run from it? It's easiest to run. And that's what I've seen so often through the years is you started out before talking about, you know, people who talk to their friends and they say, are you nuts? And they listen to that 95% who've never been successful at anything other than working a job. Yeah. But if they listen to the people who are successful and they have a challenge and, and somebody laughs in their face and says, you're doing what? You're in that what? Why in the world would you? Are you serious? You have an education for this. Why are you doing? And because there's so many negatives that people are bombarded with. And the people who are bombarding them think they're protecting them. But they're mm -hmm. not. They're only telling what they know. And it has not, if they haven't been successful at it, why would they encourage their kids to do it? If they had some bad things that happened in their business and they walked away, they tried it at one time and they walked away or they had an upline who worked with them that was unethical and it was, or it was all about them instead of, in other words, that it was all about the upline. It wasn't about helping the person become successful. Mm -hmm. And then they get their feelings hurt. And another thing that happens so often in this business is you start with a friend or you get a friend going and that friend takes off and runs ahead of you. And so then you look at yourself as a failure. You compare yeah. all the time to your friends. I, ha I had to get through all of that. Yes, um, you did. 
I believed, I believed so much in the people that shared with me that what they were telling me was so. And then I met other people who were successful. And then I met other people who were successful. And the thing that's cool is when you meet the people who are successful, it's not about the money at all. Because I have been with so many millionaires through the years that have made millions in this company. And you would never, ever know that they had made millions. Because they... Yeah. They know they put their pants on the same way you and I do, you know? Exactly. So it's about the relationship. Yeah. Always, always. And never comparing yourself to somebody else, but listening to the one who's done it. And if the person who sponsored you is not at that level yet, then listen to the one above them, you know, yeah. work with the team that way and don't take other people's issues on. That's something I had to learn because Yes, stuff happens. That's not nice. Yes, I, Nina, I am learning that. I, I, I gotta admit, I've been really bad a lot about getting down in, 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 in the dirt with people's issues, and I'm, I'm starting to realize I, I can't take it personally. That's their issue, not mine. Um, you know, I know as a leader, sometimes it gets so frustrating because you want them to know everything that you know, and they don't know it. They have to learn it by walking through it. It's like children. You can tell them, don't touch that stove. It's hot. Don't do that. Don't do that. But, you know, sometimes I got to touch it and get burned to figure out that's hot. I should never do that again. So mm -hmm. it's hard. It's hard sometimes. But um, now you said people so jump, much great stuff People there. jump ship, right? That happens. Yeah. People jump yeah. ship. The first time that happened to me, I was so devastated. And then I thought, what did I do wrong? I took it yeah. all on to be about me. I wasn't a good enough leader. I wasn't this. I wasn't that. And I dug myself into a hole. And I had somebody who was a senior leader come up to me and, and I was, you know, whining. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? And I'll never, I know exactly where I was standing. And he looked at me and he said, Nani, you have done what few have done. You need to figure out where you lost your confidence. And get it back. Yeah. Because you're good. Yeah. And when he said that to me, I took a couple swallows and I stepped back and I said, Well, thanks, Gary. I lost my confidence. I mean, I here I'm doubting myself that I lost my confidence, but I had. Yeah. Because I thought yeah. I didn't know what to do to keep people going. Because I didn't know that happened in the industry. Exactly. So Yeah. But you know what? People who jump. They think that it's going to be greener on the other side. And if they become more successful in another company, it's because they grew as a person. It's not because the industry was different. It's because yeah. they grew as a person because you well, cannot do this of, business. Yeah. And that's one of the teaching points that I had the other day in, in my own team training, um, because it really made an impact with me years ago. I got to hear John Addison, um, who was the former CEO of Primerica. Um, I believe now he's uh, either owner or publisher of Success Magazine. But at the time, he was with Primerica, and he came and spoke at our national conference at my other company. And he said, you know, the thing about network marketing and direct sales is at the end of the day, we still all have the same product, which is hope and opportunity. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if it's juice or lipstick or energy or health and wellness or whatever. At the end of the day, we all have the same product and it's hope and opportunity. And that really resonated with me um, because, you know, it's, it can be tough in this industry because everybody is so entrepreneurial. And we hear all the time, you know, you get into this industry, especially if you work for corporate America. I know for me, you know, I worked as a pharmaceutical rep for years and years. And when I came into this industry, one of the biggest things this industry taught me is about entrepreneurship. And it took the lid off my life in terms of what was possible uh, in, in terms of income and in terms of what I was capable of. And you get exposed to a lot of opportunities. And, uh, but I tell everybody, yeah, invest in real estate or you know, write a book or do all that. But you know, you know, we're still at the end of the day, all hope and opportunity here. So you kind of have to pick one and really focus. And that's what really impressed me about you is you've been with your company for 39 years. Um, and obviously there were shiny balls that came by or maybe financial times where you thought maybe another opportunity might be better. 
Um, and it, it's always intriguing to me what gets a leader to really stick and stay, you know, because as Mark Yarnell said in his book, um, Your First Year in Network Marketing, that it's a proven fact that folks that really stay with their opportunity um, long term, it's usually around year nine or so, eight or nine within that opportunity, that they really just hit mega status in terms of uh, life changing income, but most quit. Um, and, you know, it's funny because I was just talking to somebody the other day about that. Um, you know, the new car smell wears off. You know, people get a, a lease a new car every three years. Uh, a lot of marriages break up at the three year mark. I don't know what it is about three years, but um, for you, it may be the whole marriage spectrum, spectrum, three, seven, 11 and 25. I don't know. But, you know, maybe you can speak to that and how you've really dug in. And, and I know you said a lot of it was the people. Um, a lot of it was the executive team for you, but speak to that a little bit about how you stayed focused, kept your, kept your blinders on and kept running your race. I think one of the big things, Jennifer, is integrity. I think that's huge. If you know that your company has integrity, that your leaders, yes. that your owners have integrity and that's going to stay that way. To me, I never questioned anything that happened at corporate. Did I like it all? No, because we yeah. actually went through a hostile takeover and yeah. um, we were bought up by um, Shackley Japan and they held us for 15 years and they're all about numbers, numbers, numbers. So they took a lot of our benefits away. Yeah. But the base was still there. The base was there. And now we've gotten all that back since we've been yeah. purchased again. Um, I, my family doing things with my family was so important. And I knew that network marketing could give me that. And that may be different right. than some people's. The income it has never been something that I have needed until I was single. <laughs> because we did yeah. have, you know, we, we had a farm. So you always have food on the table and clothes and stuff like that. But this was mine, which I think was important. So why stick with the same company? Um, maybe because I'm not a person that the shiny objects, that's not true because there's a lot of stuff that I've gone after. I've never contemplated ever, and that was really pounded into us. Don't go run yeah. into different companies because it's the same everywhere and you have to start over. Yeah, true story. If that was it. And the other thing was that always was said is don't ever quit. Don't ever quit. You're going to have challenges, but don't ever quit. And I think That's that right. applies to whatever your company in. Because what you said, yeah. did I hit that top mile marker year eight or nine? No, because I was a turtle. I was a turtle that just kept going. I am I have to look to see now. I think I've made close to $2 million. If I haven't made over $2 million, I don't know. But I... Um, Say but that I again. Made, How much have you made? I know... I've been walking wow. the stage since 2000 for a million dollars. So wow. we're at 19 now, 20 years later almost. So I'm probably right at $2 million now. That is so, nothing to sneeze at, girl. And, mm -hmm. and let me add, for anyone watching that doesn't understand, you know, because you, you mentioned things like hostile takeovers and corporate executives. And, you know, so people listen to us sometimes and they think, oh, it's no different from corporate America. It is different because it's residual. You could technically just sit right where you're at and continue to collect a check because you're getting paid not for what you do, you're getting paid for what you started 39 exactly. years ago. Exactly. exactly. And, and I, my question to people who are in that corporate America life, and I'm not bashing that, that's great. And I have a lot of folks on my team who do both. I mean, they love their jobs. They love who they work for. Um, and they do this as a hobby or sort of part-time, and that's fine, but it's the lifestyle. I mean, I tell everybody, you know, kind of my pivot point was, um, and, and I want to talk about this too, about your why, why you got into to that. So let's, let's pin why you joined your company. But I know years ago why I joined my first network marketing company was because I was passionate about my church. And I wanted to see them build a church. They were meeting in a school and we'd bought 16 acres to build a church. And it was such a tiny, you know, little church. I just thought that's never going to happen with this little group. And um, I had put us down for a tithe. Um, I think it was 300 bucks a month. 
And a friend of mine knew that. And she knew that I was passionate about that. We worked in pharmaceutical sales together. Well, she joined that energy company and reached out to me and said, why don't you do this for your church? And that's the whole reason I joined was I thought, okay, I'm just going to switch a few energy bills. This was back in the day. And uh, which, you know, I'm not in energy anymore, but I was going to take all that money and give it to my church. And I did adjust my halo right here. Right. <laughs> I gave it all to my church, all the bonus money. And when my residual checks started hitting about $300 a month, which matched my tithe, I said, you know what? I'm just going to have my checks direct deposited to my church. And then I quit. Nina, I didn't go to another meeting for my network marketing company. Well, I take that back. I did go to a few meetings. But I didn't talk to anybody about switching their bill. I didn't talk about the opportunity. And our number one income earner called me like four years, four years, four months later to check in with me because he hadn't seen me around. He knew I wasn't working the business. I wasn't adding anybody. And he said, I just want you to look in your back office and call me back. And Nina, I was so checked out. I had to call our company to get my login. And the last time I looked, I had 39 business partners. That had grown to over 182 business partners. I click on checks and my little checks that were being direct deposited to my church, $1,200 a month, wow. $1,200 a month. And I tell everybody, do you think $1,200 a month for somebody in cardiovascular biotech sales is life changing? Not really. But what was life changing is it happened without me. I had basically gone on a four month vacay and my team grew and my checks grew. And I wasn't even there. And that is not possible. I, I look at people all the time and I say, could you take a four month vacation from your J-O-B, your job, and come back and even have a raise, much less a promotion when you got back? I mean, you'd be fired. So for you to have made $2 million in residual income, imagine what somebody would have to invest to get $2 million in dividends or royalties. I don't even know what the cash value of your business would be, but it would be astronomical. Well, I know that um, we just did a thing with Richard Brook and, and I had my socks blown off of what my business is worth. If, I mean, I would have to have, I can't remember how many million dollars it was in investments to get what I'm getting paid every month now. But I'm not done, yeah. I'm not done. And I got into. I've met you. I got in for very different reasons than you, Jennifer. I got in for tax benefits, which is so you know when I think about it, and and the benefits of a business like this are phenomenal. Um, yeah, the tax benefits are unbelievable. So that's yeah, why I got are. in, and I still enjoy that. But as when you get in, you might get in because of the shiny object. You might get in because of the health. There might be a lot of different reasons of why somebody would get involved in a company like this. Um, but as you stay with it and as you personally grow, your whys change completely. They change over and over and over. And I think about, you know, I think back, I had a good friend of mine that we worked together a lot. And I thought, man, if I ever made $50,000 in this business, it would be just amazing. Yeah. Well, when you get to that mark, it's like, that really isn't that much money. I know. It totally changes your viewpoint on what a lot of money is. Exactly. I mean, I would walk, in fact, you know, I, I tell the story of our CEO um, at the time. He was my upline in my former company, but now he's CEO of the company I'm with now. But I picked Logan Stout up at the airport, and we're, we're driving to my very first meeting ever in network marketing. It's the first time I've met Logan. And I remember him kind of looking over at me and he goes, so I hear you're a pharmaceutical rep. And I said, yeah. And he said, do you make a lot of money doing that? And I'm kind of thinking, does he not know who I think I am? Right. You know, I mean, does he not know pharmaceutical reps make a lot of money? Um, but I said, let me just say that I make six figures. And he goes, a year? And I go, yeah. And he goes, oh. And I go, oh, is that not a lot of money to you? And he goes, not really. Because I know people that make six figures a month in our industry. I know people that make six figures a week. Some who even make six figures a day. And I remember looking at him thinking, he is so full of BS, right? I just thought, no way. 
And you and I both know, because we've been in the industry a while, I mean, you, you've been at double the time I have been, but it's not uncommon to meet people in this industry who are making 60, 70, 100,000. I think the top earner in the industry, as far as record, is 1.4 million a month in uh, residual income. Is I mean, that is me. amazing. Yeah, Can yeah. You, I, I don't even know what I would do. That's a lot yeah, I know. Well, and I know, I know right. people that make a huge amount of money. We, we both do. We both do. Mm -hmm. And so as, as you're in the business longer, your why changes and your why changes yeah. and your why changes. And I always say that as you become a better person, you have another why it becomes a different why. Because this business, in my opinion, is about self-development, becoming the best that you can be, becoming the best person that you're that you can be. And I mean, I'm along with you right now that my my goal, I don't need more money to live. I want to be able to give a six figure a year. And that is so awesome, Nina. And but when you get there, can you imagine the thrill of that? I mean, I oh, just yeah just given a thousand dollars here and a thousand dollars now to there, the appreciation that comes back, you, you can't put, you know, and it's like the love you get back from people when you help them with their health. You can't put a dollar price on that. Not you can't. It's truly, it's truly priceless. Yes. I agree with you. Yeah. And you know, yeah. and, you, and you touched on that and it's interesting that we were talking about money because I will say, I think the majority of people, I'm not saying they don't love the products, but the majority of people who join to work the business initially will do so for the money. But I think you could ask anybody who's been in the industry a while, uh, like myself or like yourself, and we will tell you that it's no longer about the money for us. It's yeah. about the relationships and the lives we've been able to change um, and impact. And we, we now feel a sense of urgency. And I know you do too, because you were telling me that um, on the plane in Houston about, for example, people in your own age group that you are such a beacon of light and health to um, that, you know, are miserable or sick or on a million pharmaceuticals, you know, mm -hmm. and um, that's powerful. I mean, that is something that you never expect when you enter this industry, that it will mm. become that deep no. uh, within you. And um, so I have yeah, two age groups, Jennifer. It's people who are my age that are... <laughs> They're going to work at Walmart and stuff because yeah. they're retired and they can't live on their income. But my other age group is young people because young people want to have something of their own. I just got done doing a, a thing with a young guy. And at the turn of the century, there was only 10% of the population that worked for others here in the U.S. Yeah. And now that is completely flip-flopped that there is only 10% of the population that own their own businesses and 90% of the people insane. work for them. Yes. Huh. So the young people that are today, there's, they want to go back to so many things of the past. And there's yeah. so many young people that want to be able to raise their own families. Yes. And I feel that that was my heart. I remember years before saying, some way or another, I will figure out how to raise my own kids. You know, because I, I remember a situation where a girl had a baby six months later or six weeks later, she came back to work and left her baby with a babysitter. That was me. I did and, that with all three of my kids. I had to put them in daycare at um, eight weeks. I had C-sections, but that's the only reason I got an extra two weeks. That is horrible. That is horrible. Yeah. And I, I, it wasn't my kid even. And it hurt me for her to come back to work. And I'll never forget this. She said to me, you can talk smart now. Wait until you have your own kids. And I said yes. to her, I will figure out something. I will figure out some way. And that's why I have such a heart for young people. Because I know they want kids, but women want to be somebody. They want to make their own money as well and contribute to the family and and this is so perfect for that. Mm -hmm. It so. truly is. You've got a lot of wisdom in that. And, you know, I'm sure credibility too with young people when they're really looking for somebody who's been successful in this, in this industry. I mean, 
nobody better than you, Nana. I'm telling you. So you. you're amazing. I, it's just my heart for that because I think that a lot of our fall apart in this country is because families have fallen apart. Yes. Oh, I yeah. agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. Cool. Now, talk a little subject. bit if you want to. I, I know we kind of touched on it, but you were in a pretty abusive relationship um, for a long time. You were married to somebody who was very abusive and was probably your biggest naysayer at the same time. And I know a little bit of what drives you and your passion is to reach out and help women who are in similar situations outside of even network marketing. But mm -hmm. can you speak a little bit to that for anybody who's watching who might be dealing with that themselves? Um, absolutely. I am an eternal optimist. And so I, unless you've been in an abusive relationship, it's hard for you to understand why in the world would you stay? Yes. Um, because I kept believing it was going to get better. And there's a lot of mind control that goes along with abuse from the abuser. I didn't understand any of that at the time. But if I had not been in the company I was in, if I had not been in, in business helping people, I don't know that I would have kept my sanity, but because I was able to give out and help others, the love that I got back from everybody um, helped me get through that. But also the other huge part of it was I had to continually work on me because as he would say, you're a horrible business person. You're this, you're that, you know, you'll never amount to anything. I don't know where you're kidding yourself thinking you're going to get someplace with Shackley. All you ever do is play with people's heads. He didn't understand it at all, but it made me feel less each time we'd have one of those conversations. So I would always be working. I have spent a lot of money through the years on working on me. And it's like, you know, why is that? And I was not a Christian either until three years before my divorce. And I think that that has helped me a lot um, because I believe that God's in charge of it all. And he keeps us, keeps I us, do. I do too, yeah. I know you do, and keeps us strong and helps us through all the trials. Um, but I worked on myself. And, and when I say that, I mean, I did everything Tony Robbins. I did all of his courses. I walked on fire. I did all of that. Wow. Um, I did John Maxwell. I did, um, I, I, I don't even remember who all I've done. But yeah. I would never miss a meeting. Oh, Jim Brown and Zig Ziglar yeah, and yeah, Darren yeah, Hardy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're all out there. Yeah. yeah. And I would never miss a meeting. And I think a lot of people, because we're so into the digital, don't think that the meetings are as important yet. But the meetings are very important. I never missed a conference because yeah. it's a proven fact that the people that go to conference that apply themselves grow more than people that don't. You That's know? true. That's but at the conference, you always feel better about who you are and you feel better about what you're doing again. So yeah. all the, the negatives that are in there. But the bottom line is don't quit. Work on yourself to become a better person. What can I do yeah. to become better? And as you become a better person, your business grows too. And that's what kept well, me seeing through all of that. Yeah, and that's interesting to me, um, too, Nina, because what intrigues me about that specifically with you being in that abusive relationship and still having the, the um, I guess, the, uh, the drive to work on yourself or, or, or just the inner knowledge that you needed to work on yourself. Because I know, for example, when I was going through my John Maxwell certification uh, course, part of that, John talked about the fact that the number, and I think he says it in a lot of his books, too, but the number one reason most people don't invest in personal development or attend a Tony Robbins seminar or um, go to, you know, read any of John Maxwell's books or listen to any of Jim Rohn or, or Zig Ziglar's old tapes is because they don't feel worthy. They don't believe in themselves. They think, who am I? Right. Which uh, I don't know if we talked about that in, in Cabo or not, but I always say that my favorite poem, and I don't have time to go through it here, but you guys can Google it later, is um, Our Deepest Fear by Marianne um, Williamson. And she basically says, when you ask, who am I? You're supposed to say, who am I not to, to, to be the best I can be? You are mm -hmm. a child of God. You yeah. were given 
your own, I know one of the things we talk about in our company all the time because it plays into our name, but we always say God gave you your own fingerprint for a reason. There is nobody before you or nobody after you quite like you. You were born with unique gifts, talents, a purpose that no one else can fulfill other than you. And if you don't believe that, you need to start believing that because Nina, you believe that about yourself. You knew that deep down inside. And I know you give God a lot of the credit for that. Yeah. But it's yeah. like kudos to you to be in such a negative environment, to be in an abusive environment and still be able to tell yourself, I am worth it. I am worth it. And I'm going to work on myself and I am going to share my gifts with the world. And it I literally gets the pills. But you know what? I was taught that. It's not that I developed that on my own. I was taught that, that I had to develop myself personally. I had to work on me. That was something that Gary Burke, who's one of our you know top people, he would always say, your business grows in proportion to what you do. So I didn't relate that to my abusive relationship. You know, I'd hear, get rid of the negative people in your life. And I was like, yeah, right. How can you do that? You know, he's my husband. <laughs> yeah, I have to divorce my husband. <laughs> yeah. But, but I'm, I'm saying that, and, and there was a lot of unfaithfulness. So I'm believing that, you know, if you work on yourself and, and I don't want to promote divorce in any way by saying what I said there, but yeah, there was no, a piece and that's no, different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know if I covered that, what you asked there completely. Yeah, no, you did it. You did it perfectly. And that's okay. so true. And you know, that is Maxwell's law of the lid in um, the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. He says that uh, your level of success and growth and income will will never surpass your level of personal growth. So if you want more, you've got to become more. And it sounds weird. You know, everybody says, well, when I get more, then I'll do more. No, you've kind of got to do more now to get more. Um, yeah. And you've got to become more. You've got to become the person that you want to ultimately be. And, yeah. um, and you, you know, know and I even along that same um, line is that somebody that comes in new and they see somebody that shot way up really fast, and they're not, we got the comparitis that's natural in you, you have to fight against it. But they're comparing themselves to that person. Well, I came in and I'm working hard, blah, blah, blah. They don't have the same resources. That is right. so, I've learned that such a big thing and I have to teach people that. You have to become that person. Like when you came in, you had tremendous people skills ready because of what you did. Not everybody that comes in has great people skills. Some people come exactly. in and they puke all over people because they don't know that it's about asking questions and it's about them. It's not about telling them everything. Some people come in and they're afraid of people. They have to build their people skills. There's so many different resources that each of us have. So when you start comparing yourself to somebody else and you don't have the same resources, and that took me years to get past because I had a friend yes. of mine that we were, she was always one rank ahead of me. And I always, thought, okay, now I'm ready to go up one. She's up one. Now I'm ready to go up one. And then I stopped because I went through a period of self-doubt again of myself. Yeah. yeah. And it was so hard because I watched what she was doing and I wasn't doing it. And then I finally got it. You're not her. Yeah. You know, and her people are not your people. Yeah. You, know, you have to develop more to be able to move. So yes. that's what I worked on. And that's why I'm so excited where I'm at now. I I'm, know. You um, know, doing stuff the way you've been doing it. I'm doing everything the old school way yet. Well, I'm still old school. I mean, part of why I came to Cabo was to learn the, the new stuff, you know. And, and I, I admire John and Nadia so much because of what they've been able to build. I mean, I've watched them over the course of the four years that I've known them go from, you know, six figures a year to six figures a month. And in this business and they do it through social media marketing and it's so important, but you know, I've also learned through talking to other mentors of mine in this industry that, you know, um, it's not, it, it's still in this, in this business, it's still not your cake. It's the icing on the cake, but it's not your cake. I mean, the cake is still the relationships. It's still the face to face, yeah. uh, interactions. Yeah. It's still, you know, yeah. God forbid, you got to pick up the phone and actually have a conversation versus, texting or messaging like for example i love audio messages but i've been dealing with something the last couple of days where 
it's just nonstop audience back and forth. I mean, and I've, I literally kept saying over and over, call me, call me, call me, you know, <laughs> because it, I just wanted to handle it over the phone. You know, it's just easier yeah. old school sometimes, but um, you know, it's just the day and the age that we're in technology makes everything run smoother. And there, there's times I am very grateful um, yes. for that. But, but I think, I think Nina, you're a lethal weapon because you've got both the old school skills. You're the old school ninja with the new school, you know, know how now. So yes. you're unstoppable. Basically. And you know, what's exciting is Dr. Shackley started his company when he was 65 years old. Oh, that's cool. Isn't it? And I'm like, okay, That's I'm super starting cool. now. <laughs> I know. For people who think, oh, well, you know, I'm too old to start a business. Yeah, let them chew on that a while. It's like Colonel Sanders. Didn't he start Kentucky Fried Chicken when he was 60 or 65? That's yep. probably why Dr. Shackley started Shackley, because yeah. everybody was eating fried chicken. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. But, you know, um, you know, my company, ID Life, I mean, we just, we're definitely, um, you know, lovers of you guys because uh, y'all have led the way in this space for a very long time, along with several mm -hmm. other legacy companies. And um, it, and it's great. I think it's a huge movement. I think we're all locking arms to, to spread the word that health is wealth. And, yeah. um, you know, you don't have anything if you don't have your health. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a yeah. huge, huge message. Can I address something else, Jennifer? Um, sure talks about success. Um, you can build this business on your base, your start, because most people start it with 15 to 20 hours a week, right? Yeah. Not very many people start this business full time. But what yeah, happens, yes. But what happens is it's not treated like a job because it's not a job because you're accountable to you. You're not accountable to anybody else. Mm -hmm. So what happens is it's like, okay, yeah, I got to do this and this today. And then the kids are doing or whatever, life gets away. It's like, oh, I'll make up for it tomorrow. Yeah. And I'll make up for it tomorrow. And I've said to my team members that don't are not growing and they're frustrated. I said, I want to ask you a question. If you worked for um, Kohler, which is a big company here, and you showed up as often as you show up for your business here, how long would you have a job? Mm -hmm. And what happens in a business doesn't grow and they then fear set, set in. So what I'm saying is that if you want success, you have to treat it like a business. You have to treat it. Danelle just said, you have to treat it like a job. Because yes. you have to consistently put in that effort. When you get to where you're making what you want to make, you can treat it however you want. You know, that's right. up to you. You can relax and, you know, do like you said, you didn't do anything and your check increased it. When I had my cancer surgery, I didn't do anything for, I don't remember how many months my check was the same. So, yeah. But if you don't treat it seriously as a business, because there's no investment hardly. You know, our investments are yeah. so little to get into they a are. business that will yep. pay you more than most companies or businesses get. A lot of businesses yes, can't absolutely. make what we make. I know. As far well, as I mean, you've made $2 million. I know my check monthly is more than I made my whole first year out of college. Um, you know, it's just you don't see that in any other industry. But like you said, it doesn't happen overnight. You still have to work yeah. it. You know, yep. and, uh, and in fact, there was a speaker in my old company that I loved. He was hilarious, a big cowboy, and he was so funny. But uh, he used to say, he used to really bug him how people, you know, really want you to convince them that this is not a pyramid scheme, you know, that this is not, the, you know, the illegal or whatever. But then they get in and they kind of act like it is, right? You know, they sit there and they just think that there's a U-Haul truck that's going to back up <laughs> on the day they sign up and just start dumping dollar bills in their driveway. And that is not what happens. I mean, you've got to work it. And as he used to say, he's like, but then people don't work it. And then they drop out or don't have success. And then they point back to network marketing and go, oh, I got burned, you know, or whatever. And he's like, it is not the treadmill's fault that you ain't losing weight unless you're putting your big rump on it. Right? You I got love the treadmill. That. 
I, I mean, you've obviously to. got a great program that has produced successful results for you for 39 years. I know with our company, we're younger, we're five years, but we have people killing it. Oh, and yeah. you know, you've just got to do the work and people don't want to do the work. Yeah. It's yeah. that daily action, you know, yeah. or they're putting their eggs all into one basket with one way of reaching people and, you know, true. several different ways, you know, we're all individually designed. So you need yeah. different ways to reach different people. Not everybody's on Facebook, not everybody's on Instagram, not everybody, um, you know, wants to talk on the phone conversely. So you've got to be able to text or you've got to be we'll able to use that email. So you can text. I had yeah. somebody that wanted to do the business that didn't even have emails. And I'm like, how will I do this? It was an older person. Yes. And I'm like, wow, this is really old school. Well, there are some things that I say are must haves. You know, I, I'm sure your company is probably the same way because I think it's pretty standard in, in our businesses. But they usually will tell you like the website is optional. You know, that's your kind of optional package. And I've had people go, well, can I do it without the optional package? You know, and I'm like, it's 27 bucks a month. And what business out there does not have a website? I mean, you've got to, if you were to open a shoe store tomorrow, you would build a website that would have your presence on it, you know? Yeah. So you need certain tools. You need the website. Um, you know, if you don't have email, God bless you. I mean, or people I say, know. well, you know, I don't know how to text or I'm like, oh, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. I have to share so. this with that. I was in Montana last year and my daughter and I were going to go and get our nails done. And she's, well, mom, why don't you call and make some appointments? Well, I don't know where to go there. So yeah. I went on my phone and I looked up nail salons. And there was one place that had any presence on the internet. And it was 30 miles away. And when I called, she said, it'll be two weeks. I'm like, excuse me? And yeah. I, said, I said to my daughter, how do people stay in business out here? And she goes, what do you mean? But <laughs> it's a smaller yeah. town. And they just, it's face to face. Everybody knows everybody. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's, not, that's not the norm. You need to have a presence on the web today. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is so true. So, and you got to have the right tools. So, you yeah. know, and on that note, I mean, if you were to say, what is the number one biggest contributing factor to your success do you think you could answer that i would say it's a love for people I and, would agree and with the that. consistent effort the consistent effort over and over because i can love people and not do anything and it won't get me anywhere but it's my love for people that keeps me going to do right. it right yeah I, well, you but can't love them from afar. You got to love them and help them, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. It's a consistent effort, the consistent doing. Um, that's my biggest thing is is every day. And I mean, I'm at a, a level now that I don't have to work, but I'm so fired up to really move forward that right. I'm working. You know, somebody said, I can't believe after this many years you're still working. And I said, well, so are you. Yeah. You know? But it's if, if I was content with where I was and didn't want to grow anymore and make a difference for anybody else, I wouldn't have to do anything. But that's not, I have such a love for people. Yeah. I think that that's first has to be a requirement to be successful in this business because it's not about you and I. Yes. So love people and no. consistently do what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, I would say that too. Now, do you, do you visualize your success much? Like, I know in our team, we've been talking a lot about vision boards. Um, we did a vision board workshop recently, and um, I think I'm doing a Facebook Live on Friday night with a gentleman all about vision boards. There's some crazy stories around that. But do you do some big, uh, do you do a vision board? Do you have your here. goals written out? Um, yeah, you? yeah, it's up here. I oh, have really? it in front of me. God, you need to, you need to, I don't know if you can pop me. your phone off and show everybody your vision board, but that'd be cool. It. Can you see it? I can't, oh, I don't know. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. With, I see, is that the Eiffel Tower? Or, I saw something on there. It looked like travel. Oh, I love travel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to Greece in May. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's going to be fun. Yes, I'm going to Greece in May. I love to travel. And I've always had this trip to Greece is going to be different for me because I don't have any family. And yeah. I don't have 
I tried to get a friend to go like either before or after, and that didn't happen. I know that when I get there, it's going to be amazing. Um, yeah. But travel has been a hot button for me. But it's not just me traveling. It's usually I always take somebody with me. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, really you're going to have a blast. I mean, technically, you're going to end up with, quote, I mean, you do have a family. They're just all grown and gone out of the house. But, but you'll get new family being over there with that, that group of people. Yeah. You're going to be around such positive, amazing, world-changing people on that trip. Uh, I know that's going to be huge. So I wish I could have gone, but not oh, this year. Awesome in the yeah. Oh, no, we could have been I'm sorry you're not. I'm, it's yeah. going to be awesome, yeah. Mastermind. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, we, we did a mastermind together in Cabo with John and Nadia Melton and Danelle Delgado. And Danelle is taking a big group of people uh, to Greece. And um, and doing a lot of masterminding in Greece. What better place to, to do that in? Yeah. There's only 16 people going. 16. So you get up close and personal with Danelle. That's pretty cool, yeah. too, you know? Yeah. So she, she's amazing. She was just re recently hanging out with Richard Branson, that girl. I'm pretty, pretty I know. impressed. And yeah. you know what's so cool? Again, so here's somebody who's one of the wealthiest people in the world. But what's so amazing, it was not about wealth. It's what money can do. And yes. everything that they did on that week was about making a difference on people's lives globally. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's true. And, and you do see that even with the, you know, Bill and Melinda Gates foundation and um, all the work that they do there. And um, you really see that when these people, and I know a lot of people sit back and go, Oh, that's, that's just them trying to get tax breaks or whatever. It's really not. I think, <laughs> I think for people, especially if they want to find true happiness, because, we see it all the time. I mean, unfortunately, in the tabloids with um, and it's a it's a very sad reality. But there's a lot of people out there with a lot of success and a lot of fame and a lot of money who are very depressed, even su suicidal, um, who are not happy. Oh, yeah. And I personally yeah. believe that true joy comes from serving others, you know. Yes. And the last step of personal growth is giving. Did yes. you know that? Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's where you have the biggest amount of growth is in giving to others. Yeah. So, anyways. Well, you're frozen on my screen right now, Nina. I don't know if I see your face, but you're like frozen. You know why? Because I did a backwards <laughs> I see you thing. frozen. What do I have to do? Um, all right. Well, I guess we've kept people on for a good while, but I really appreciate you being on here today with me. And um, I'd love to do it again in the future sometime. Maybe we can touch on some other topics. Yeah. Or get more in depth on a few. Yes. I, I love this too, because I think it's our job to go out there and educate. Can you hear what I'm saying, even though you can't see me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. I can okay. see you too. You're just not moving. You're like okay. frozen, but it's okay. a good picture of you. So <laughs> good. I don't have my mouth hanging wide open. Um, so what no, I was going to say, no. is, I think that this is awesome because even though we're in two different companies, it's educating people on the possibilities that's out there for them. So, yes. I appreciate this very much, Jennifer. I enjoyed it. Um, I did too, girl. Thank you so I much. loved it. And um, I know we're going to talk soon. Yes. So. Yes. Okay. All right. Love you guys. Love you. Yes. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.